just the quality and detail that goes into uh, their tools. So thank you to them for sending this out. Let's look this in. There we go. Charging cable. So let's put a little bit of oil in it. We're gonna start our haircut. All right, so with clipper over comb, what I wanna do is I wanna separate the top and the bottom. So here we go, we're gonna come across and around just under that crown area, really that mid crown, that cowlick area, I guess, I guess I should say. Just like that, I'm gonna do the same thing. So just under that cowlick, around. Like. Depending on the client, depending on your relationship with the client, you may want to uh, start in the front and determine the length. Because let's say they, they talk about wanting to go a little bit shorter um, and you don't know exactly how short, you could start off cutting a little bit of this and then just see if they're happy with it. So we'll pretend and we'll go with that scenario today. Um, if it's a client that's coming in for me, sometimes I like to start in the back. Again, it's up to you and your comfort level because you don't want to start in the back, work your way through the entire haircut, get to the side, and then they're like, you know what, I want that a little bit shorter, and then you gotta go through and cut the whole thing again. Um, this just saves time. Whenever I work clipper over comb, I like to have the clipper at the fully closed position. So the blade, the closest, the guard of the blade, which is this top part here, the blade is here underneath. I like the guard to be as close to the edge of the blade as possible so that the clipper is as close to the comb as possible so I get a nice clean cut. Uh, but if you're just starting out, you may wanna crank that up just a couple clicks so that you're a little bit further away from the comb just to give yourself a little bit of grace as you're coming through it. So that's really just, again, a personal preference. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scoop up under and the goal here when you're cutting clipper over comb is the scoop and then lift the comb back off at a little bit of an angle. That angle is gonna create a graduation. We wanna take that graduation and push it up the head shape. Basically the way that I look at this is when you're squeegeeing water off of, let's say your windshield, right? So you soak the windshield with water and then you're squeegeeing it and you're, as you push that weight, it goes somewhere else, right? So I take that water and I push it somewhere else and now I have a buildup of water weight in a different area. Same thing as I work up the head here. I cut it in one place and now my weight line is here. Then I scoop it again and I cut it. Now my weight line is here. And you just keep moving that weight line up the head shape until you drop it off wherever you want it to live. So that's the way that I've always looked at it. So we'll come through, scoop up underneath, get an angle with our comb. And then I come through here and I just work off of the face and clipper across, right? So now when I drop it, my weight line is right here. Now I scoop again. I can see that weight line. I wanna shift it up. So I wanna remove the weight line from where it is. And now my weight line is here. So you just decide where you want that weight line to be. Then I can come in and even taper this and take it a little bit tighter. Now, same thing here. I'm gonna start in the corner edge here, clipper back, lift up. This is the same thing, scissor over comb. It's all the same motion. Just tool choice, whatever you're comfortable with. Like that. And now I want to connect these two areas. I've got my length, I've got my length. Now I come, and what I would do is fold the client's ear down. This one has a plastic ear. So I come in here. And now through, connect, lift, connect. Moving that weight line up the head shape. Now what starts to happen as we're cutting it, I'm using a flat comb, right? So if I have a flat comb on the head and I'm working on a curved surface, the flat comb, everything I cut at the comb is gonna be the shortest, especially in this middle point. Everything that's on the outer edges of the comb is gonna be longer because the head's curving away. 
and that's okay. You want that. So one thing that I noticed in Clipper over comb throughout the years of doing it is that if I really just follow the head shape the whole time, you get a really round shape that doesn't really have a lot of definition. It doesn't show off the head shape. I, at this point in my career, I want to show off the head shape. So I like having those angles and allowing the head shape to create some weight lines to give it a more natural look, more um, kind of structured look. I, I don't necessarily, you'll notice that this first cut wasn't actually the length that I'm gonna have the haircut. I went in, started cutting it, started to get a feel for how the hair looked and reacted, especially based on the density and all of that. Then once I got up here and I put the weight line where I wanted it, then I went back and cut this a little bit shorter and tapered it down. So that's a personal preference for me. I don't know if that's across the board for everyone. You guys can let me know, but that's something that I like to do is get first kind of determine that length, come through, cut, 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 get my weight line where I want it, let it go, then come in and tighten up around the nape and around the hairline to just give me a little bit cleaner feel. So now I went from this angle in the corner of the head and now I'm gonna pop directly into the center back. So allowing there to be a little bit of a corner in this haircut instead of just softly rounding it all the way through. I got my guide from the edge here. So just like this, and I'm gonna work a line straight across, connecting it. And I wanna drop my weight line in the crown a little bit deeper. So I don't wanna to go too far up. What that'll do, if you went too far up in the crown, you end up taking this weight out back here, so you lose that little bit of head shape that you have going through it. So I just make sure as I come up here and I decide to drop it, I'm really just creating a straight line straight up like this. So I'm following that line. So as I work through it, my vertical line looks like this, even though I'm cutting horizontally, I'm still thinking about that vertical line up through it. You always wanna be thinking about that. If you're cutting horizontally, you wanna be thinking about your vertical line. And if you're cutting vertically, you still need to be thinking about that horizontal line. Again, now taking my angle, and I'm actually gonna work back off And then remember, I go a little tighter. Scoop it. Just taking that weight line up the head shape. And just connecting the two sides together. Slightly diagonal back. Okay. So now I'm gonna work through and work the hairline with the trimmer in a minute, but I'm just gonna work this crown area real quick, start getting my scissors involved um, and blending this just slightly because I have a little more control in my fingers. So I'm gonna go just like this and I'm gonna work straight up just like that and soften that crown area. This scissor I'm using here is the Pixel Elite. This is like my dream scissor. So once we made it, I was psyched. It's got this textured um, finger rest, an easy, quick uh, adjuster on the tension. So you can adjust the tension really easy. Um, it says Pixel Elite on there. Gold finish. It's the FSE Pixel Elite. You can get it on our online store. Okay. 
And I don't want to change that weight line that I put into the haircut. So I'm being very cautious just to clean this up and not necessarily do too much shifting of weight horizontally. Just check my line here. I'll just dust it a little bit. That's that kind of diagonal back flow of the weight. All right, now I'm gonna blow dry the bottom real quick. Another, this video is not sponsored by JRL, but they did send me all these cool things. So we'll just keep shouting them out. Uh, blow dryer. And the reason I wanna blow dry this is because I wanna be able to really fine tune the uh, hairline with my trimmer and wet hair, you're not gonna be able to do that that well. So I'll go through, blow dry it. You guys enjoying the class so far? Let me know in the, uh, let me know in the comments. So you know, the reason that I go either wet hair with clipper cutting or dry hair with clipper cutting is um, how short am I going with the hair? If I'm going short uh, with clipper guards, I'm gonna go dry hair. If I'm going clipper over comb, I wanna have a little bit more control. And really what wet hair does is it allows you to have partings and control. Um, I could go through and cut this length uh, dry. Some people might prefer that. But for me, just being able to kind of separate it by combing it back and scooping up just the hair that I wanna cut and going through and cutting it uh, helps me out. And then what you'll notice is in this haircut, I went through, cut it wet with the clipper over comb work. And then I finished it with scissor uh, scissor work over my finger. So, um, and I wanna do all that wet. So it's really just length. Length is my choice. If it's short hair with clipper guards, I'm going dry hair. If it's a longer haircut like this, which isn't super long, but it's long enough, uh, I can control it with the comb. So I just have it wet. I also can get through it a little bit easier with the comb as well. So, all right, so we're gonna use the trimmer here and I'm just gonna work around the edges of the haircut. If they had a real ear, I'd be folding that around, but they don't in this case, so I'm just gonna comb it kind of over the ear and tap it. There we go. One thing I look for in a trimmer is for it to have just a, a nice little grip to the teeth. I like a little bit wider teeth on a trimmer. This one's not too bad. Doesn't tend to push the hair too much, so. And then my final move is to grab this guy, which is my Blend 40 Elite. This is one of our brand new scissors, and if you're looking for the scissors I'm using, you wanna support the channel, um, the Blend 40 Elite, this thing is phenomenal. It takes out 40% of the hair and just softens any edge of any taper, any blend, shorter hair. Um, instead of using just a plain scissor, which will completely create new weight lines, this just softens everything up by just softening the edge. Especially when you get into these bulkier areas like the crown, it just makes it nice and soft. If I can zoom in to show you guys how little I'm actually hitting with this, literally like this much in, and I'm just dusting the edge. And what that'll do is just soften the line. But I don't want to take that line and move it up because then I'll have a new line that I'll have to then go in and cut even more. Now take out our clips. We're working on the top of the haircut. And for this, I want to create not hair that's like in his face. I want it to come back off of his face. Nice little kick over, little side parting. Determine where he wants to part it. Let's say right here. Like that. And then I'm just gonna start blending this in. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start on the back side here, the left side, the smaller side, part side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work a uh, traveling guide until I get to about the ear and where the head starts to curve forward and then once I get there 
then I'm going to bring everything back to that point. So travel and then stationary at this point here. What that'll do is just build me length towards the front that I can then comb backwards. We're going to start right here on the side. And I'm going to blend this, but I still want the weight line up and up high. Blend it, but the head is curving away, so it's still giving me a weight line right here. Then we're traveling, so I'll bring that hair I just cut to the new section. Finger still parallel to the wall to build that weight line. Then I'll go one more travel like this parallel to the wall then i'll take all that stationary bring all this back to my stationary guide and cut parallel to the wall so that's giving me that length basically pushes length towards the front you can see how that gets longer there that gives me the the length of hair I need to go back. I can soften that later in the dry cut. All right, so now we're gonna work on the heavy side and from the center crown area, I'm gonna split this into a triangle and move the top portion over. And then I'm just gonna blend and I'm actually gonna fully blend this underneath. Uh, and the reason I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a disconnection with this point here. And what that disconnection will do is it'll fall over top, but it won't build up so heavy. So if I blend all of this in, I'm just going to get a super heavy weight right around this parietal ridge area. So for me, I want to blend this completely through. Just like this, traveling guide. not over directing it back because I don't want to push that weight already. I don't want this weight to be pushed. So that's completely blended through. Now I'll blend, start blending the top with the side using a traveling guide. But then when I get to that midpoint where the head starts to go forward, that's when I'm going to overdirect back just like I did on our part side. Just like that. So now I'm entering that area. So now I overdirect this entire top back to that point. Cut. Here's a little tip for the guys out there. When you want to build height in this area, you want to do that without product. So we will use product to finish it, but you want to have it basically looking the way you want it to look before you put product in. That's what's going to make it last all day. If you just put it in your wet hair over time, when you put product in wet hair, it dissolves a little bit of the product and the weight of the wet hair starts to pull the hair down. So you might find that you put hair, product in your hair, and you put it back like this and it looks good for a minute, but then all of a sudden that weight and gravity, um, it starts to dry and it starts to dry moving forward on the head and then you end up uh, with hair in your face all day that you didn't want. Even if you take the blow dryer and you just hold it like this to blow dry the front and you don't even worry too much about the sides and back, that's a better option than just putting it in your wet hair. So just a quick blow dryer um, and a tip for you guys out there. One thing that I like to do um, when I'm blow drying my hair at home, because I don't like to spend a ton of time doing it either and I don't have to, is I have a blow dryer uh, like um, basically wadded up into my sock drawer and I just pull it out, plug it in ne next to my bed and I just hit my hair real quick just to get it to be up in the air and then I'll put my product in um, and I do that as soon as I'm either out of the shower and I'm going on with my day or if I shower the night before and I get up in the morning, I just throw water on my hair and then I blow dry it up in the air and put the product in. So those are just small tips that will help um, keep your hair out of your face all day. As a professional finish, I'm going to use a brush 
and I'm going to do a little bit of lifting or leafing of the hair to then pull that tension up and work it through. And then I'm going to work back and over just to add a little bit of volume and smoothness to the sides. So you can see that basically the hair is doing what I want it to do without even putting product in it. And now when I go to add my product, it's just gonna stay exactly where I want it. This is one of my new favorite products. I actually use it on my hair all the time. Just helps mold the hair quite a bit. You don't need a ton of it. And also um, for guys that have a little bit thinner, finer hair, um, this product makes your hair feel a little thicker, which, and if you felt like the hair was a little too thick, you could always go through um, something I like to do. This is my uh, dual 20 pro. This takes out 20% of the hair. So you'll see the teeth difference on the 40 and the 20. So this one takes out 40%. Oh, focusing in on that guy. 40% and then 20%. You can see the... And the cool thing about the dual and why we call it dual is because it, you can flip it. It's got an even handle. So if you want to have the blade down, which is what I like to have, especially when I'm blending, you can come through blade down and then just cut and blend through the hair. Just like that. And then if you want to have the teeth down, you just flip it and you can have teeth down to texturize. Um, so this creates more of a layered effect when you have the teeth down like this, and then you get more of a graduated effect, which is great for blending. Um, like I was talking about blending that line, this tool with the blade down is going to give you more of a graduated effect, which will help with the actual blending of the haircut. So just working through, um, even in this heavier part here, just being able to tap through it and remove a little bit of that weight without taking out length is helpful in the end style. So you can see, just a nice clean cut, really uh, salon friendly. We have a ton of like really cool tools on freesaloneducation.com. We have a ton of free education. We have our digital hair cutting system. We have all the scissors, um, combs, Velcro clips, um, tons of different scissors. The Evo razor, the Tri razor, patented three-sided tool. Cuts 100% of the hair, 25% of the hair, and 50% of the hair. Great for texture. Probably use that in a haircut coming up. Uh, if you want to support the channel, go to freesaloneducation.com.